Welcome to a second section session of Tuesday. Yes, 34 yeah. people. It's good to see you all here. Oh, 34, okay. few more, few more. Okay. Camilo, okay. uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. thank okay. you. Okay, yeah, for, okay. So you hear me well, right? Okay, hey, okay. So, okay, so hello everyone. So it's uh, really my pleasure to introduce for this uh, afternoon session to Professor Marek Adamowicz, who is going to talk about the concept of the effective potential beyond Newton and Einstein, a possible quantum correction. So Professor, so you have 45 minutes. Thank you very much and welcome everyone. My talk is dedicated to my long-term friend, Professor Zdenek Stuchlik, on the occasion of his birthday. Happy birthday, Zdenek. And uh, <clears throat> Zdenek has a very beautiful page uh, about himself, not only about his physics, but uh, also about his photographs. Some of them I am showing here, which are very apropos of the subject of today's talk. That is uh, by Zdenek, who made this photo in Rio, that is Copacabana Beach, and it's me, my silhouette. Another made by somebody else in a different location, and another one still uh, made by still somebody else uh, in a different location, still different, there's San Francisco, San Francisco Bay here. However, uh, if you look at the first one, the famous one uh, made by Zdenek, and then this or that, you see only silhouette, you do not see my face, but you know that it is me. There is something some information in these keywords uh, which are sufficient to un identify the object, like in what we do. That is uh, a computer generated picture of M87. Assuming that it is a Kerr black hole and there is this famous Einstein ring, and that is a computer generated image of the same object, but uh, made by Zdenek and his colleagues, uh, that uh, the object is they assume a naked singularity. And you do see that these two pictures are very, very different. That is the whole hope we have, that uh, by studying this, uh, pictures, radio images of black hole in M87, we can distinguish between black hole or some non-black holish object, if it is a non-black holish object. So my, my talk will be about that, but let me start because it's a birthday talk uh, from some historical remarks. These photographs were taken 15 years ago. Uh, that was my 60th birthday, and that is my uh, birthday evening. Uh, I will not, uh, th that is me. I looked totally different than I look now. I will not uh, tell you more about uh, where it is and who are these people. Uh, that is uh, original Picasso. That's the, uh, the only thing uh, which I would like to mention. And then 15 years ago is a special time because it is about this time I joined Opava's faculty. And I, from about 15 years now, am a professor at Opava. Here you see my first students, Eva Shramkova and Gabo Terek in Sweden. Uh, I've met them 
uh, in Göteborg, where I was a professor of astrophysics. And there is another student of mine, Adele Straub, uh, who was for a, not a very short time, uh, also involved in working at Opava University. Zdenek's work hit COVID-19 research. Look, <laughs> that is a very recent paper, 6th of October 2020, uh, which is using a paper, very mathematical paper, uh, by, by Zdenek, uh, John Miller and me, about concept of radius of gyration in general relativity, which for some reason uh, is helpful for COVID research, okay? But my talk is about a general idea, vague even, general and vague idea that we can distinguish between a possibility that in M87 there is a black hole, Kerr black hole, or something else, not necessarily doing very, very detailed investigation, uh, for example, expanding general metric into PPN <coughs> terms corrections, etc., but using some very general topological ideas. And that is uh, connected to this silhouette of naked singularity, which I show you uh, in the second slide as the next idea, that we should be looking for topological differences, not small uh, quantitative differences, but topological differences. And that is a, this general idea which I will describe. Starting from very simple things, I will show you how one could find relativistic effects in planetary motion uh, around black holes, uh, particle motion uh, around black holes, not knowing Einstein theory, but taking this information, taking, taking uh, physics from Newton's theory. And it is in parallel to what I am talking today, uh, that not knowing quantum gravity, we could nevertheless, using only Einstein's theory, tell something about possible effects of quantum gravity to this M87 uh, event horizon telescope images. So I, I will not describe all the lines here. It is just a short summary of uh, Newton and Einstein theories. And uh, the idea of, uh, of a few sl next slides is that we do not know about Einstein. We know only about Newton. So that is, uh, the whole approach. And I stress that this approach is very, very different from all approximate approaches. It is uh, topologically, uh, there, there, there is a, a, an O instead of P here. So, oh no, there's missing P, there's missing P here. It is topologically exact. Or theologically exact. Yes, topologically exact. It Can should be also theologically. Uh, thank you for this remark. Topologically exact. So conservation of energy is of course very uh, similar in Newton's uh, and Einstein's theories. Namely that if field is time independent and energy is conserved and when uh, the field is uh, independent on azimuthal angle, then angular momentum is conserved. 
And the idea is that the same will be in a white class of uh, quantum gravity theories. So standard way of deriving from this that. And then we have this effective potential. So energy is conserved and energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. Kinetic energy on a plane is uh, one half of a uh, square of the radial velocity plus one half of the square of azimuthal velocity and azimuthal velocity is connected to the uh, specific angular momentum. So you can arrange the energy and momentum conservation uh, writing that one half of this square is energy minus the effective potential. And the effective potential uh, for, for the potential minus GM over R uh, is this, but in general it is potential energy, whatever the potential is, plus one half of uh, angular momentum square divided by r square. And then of course uh, connection bec because th th this is uh, non-negative by nature, uh, connection, uh, a condition for motion is given, is given by, by this formula. So that is for uh, this potential effective potential is given by this formula and then of course uh, <clears throat> when r goes to zero centrifugal effects dominate and when r is going to infinity gravitational effects dominate the effective potential. So the shape of effective potential is in Newton's theory necessarily like this, that close to zero, close to the origin, uh, there is this infinity, asymptotic infinity, plus infinity, and for very large radii, effective potential goes to zero from the negative side. Then you know for sure that somewhere there should be a minimum, at least one. And that of course is a standard simple uh, and we learned this in some countries in uh, high school and some countries at the university. And uh, continuing these simple things, uh, then we have circular orbit when energy of motion corresponds to the energy at the minimum of the effective potential. If energy is smaller for a given, it's a, for some given angular momentum, this shape. If angular momentum is zero, then the shape is different and the, there is this hyperbola, uh, which has a different asymptote it's not goes to plus infinity, but it goes to minus infinity. And it goes to minus infinity every time when gravity wins over centrifugal effects. I will return to this later. So the classification of orbits uh, for energy smaller than this uh, E0 for, uh, for circular orbit motion is impossible and we have circular orbits, elliptic orbits, parabolic orbit when energy is zero corresponding to energy at infinity and when it is positive <clears throat> then we have hyperbolic orbit. Then uh, circular orbits are important so it's easy to find uh, Angular, mom angular momentum and then angular velocity. And that is of course given by this famous Kepler's law, uh, which Newton 
derived from the theory that the cubes of orbital sizes are proportional to squares of orbital times and uh, this ratio is uh, proportional to the mass of the central object and it is how we measure masses in astronomy. For centuries we know how to measure masses because of this Kepler's law. And then uh, by doing perturbations, assuming that uh, we have we have an orbit which is not exactly circular, but slightly non-circular. Uh, but this amount uh, uh, of, of, of extra energy is very small. We have slightly non-circular orbits. And uh, by simple arguments, that is a really simple algebra. And here, here is expansion in Taylor series uh, of, uh, of the effective potential, but at the circular orbit, the first derivative of the potential is zero. So in this expansion, we have the second term, second derivative. This is why this is why there is second derivative here in the last formula, which looks like formula for a harmonic oscillator. And then, of course, we have uh, epicyclic frequency equal to the second derivative. For stability, the square of epicyclic frequency must be greater uh, than zero. Uh, omega square greater than zero. There is missing zero here. And in Newtonian potential, we can easily check that uh, orbital velocity is given by this formula and epicyclic uh, angular velocity is also given by the same formula. So these two angular velocities are equal, which means that uh, when the, a planet makes full circle along the epicycle, it also makes full orbital circle exactly at the same time. So after one turn, it arrives at the same, it, it arrives at the same point here, which means that uh, the orbits are closed and uh, they are ellipses. That's Newton's theory. And summary, potential, uh, energy and momentum conservation, energy, effective potential, first derivative equals zero at the circular orbit and then we have this Kepler slow second derivative equals to epicyclic frequency square and we have epicyclic frequency and they are equal okay that's Newton but uh, we know not in Newton's theory but we know from say experimental physics that velocities in particular orbital velocities cannot be greater than velocity of light. So if we will take Newton's theory, we don't know anything about uh, Einstein, we take only Newton's theory and we calculate orbital velocity that, and then we are saying that orbital velocity must be less than uh, sound, not sound, but light velocity square. Uh, then we are getting this inequality uh, that R for applicability of the Newton theory should be greater than this quantity. And we, of course, call this quantity gravitational radius. So if uh, we are <coughs> considering a region uh, which is closer to the gravity center than Rg, then we cannot apply Newton's theory because, because then uh, the orbital velocities would be greater than zero. So effective potential, and here is this region Rg. We may believe in this part of the curve 
But what then happened? And that is exactly the idea. We are to now talking about topologies. What may happen to this line here? Now, first of all, uh, let me make a trivial remark that it's, it cannot be like this. This line cannot continue like this because it would be then in Newton's regime. And we know that there are no orbits uh, connected with this. So it enters this region and what it may do uh, in this non-Newtonian re region. So let me repeat here. It's Newton's theory. And we know that with Newton's theory, you can arrive safely to this point. But what happens here? So there are not many possibilities. Uh, it, it may be that it does the same in Einstein's theory. Of course, we know what it does in Einstein's theory. But if you pretend we do not know Einstein, then we may uh, uh, our thought may go along this way. It cannot do it, uh, many things. It, it can be just the same uh, as Newton in Newton's theory, but of course in a different place. If it is like this, then it is a bad news because then uh, in these images <clears throat> and in the dynamics, we would have just small quantitative differences between care and not, uh, sorry, between uh, Newton and uh, uh, and Einstein. And it would be very difficult to discover them. The same if the asymptotic is not at zero, but in some other place. But then it could be, it could happen that is like this. If it is like this, that asymptotic is totally different topologically, doesn't go up to infinity, but instead it goes down to infinity. Then, of course, the situation is totally different. And we know that that is exactly what happens in Einstein. But if we do not know Einstein, we can consider this all these possible situations one by one, and we will include this one because it is one of the possible topologies. And then uh, look here, if, 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 if we say, okay, in Einstein it's like this, then we know that it's also like that, that Einstein here, Newton on the red, that very far away, there would be small quantitative differences between Einstein and Newton. <clears throat> And of course, uh, we can measure them, and we do measure them. That, that is uh, uh, the reason uh, for perihelium of Mercury advance, the small quantitative differences. And of course, it is because in Einstein, the two omegas are not equal. But it is small quantitative, and we are interested and uh, in the weak field tree limit, but we are interested in strong field. So then uh, here, what we see, uh, first of all, is uh, that there would be this branch is not very much different uh, than Newton. But then it turns down, it has a maximum which corresponds to uh, unstable orbit, circular unstable orbit. <clears throat> so uh, then we see uh, that only from considering this topological possibility, we may guess correctly that uh, a possibility in non-Newtonian behavior in the strong gravity is that there would be uh, that there would be unstable circular orbits, and of course we do not know these numbers 
uh, from topological consideration. But we know that there are unstable orbits. And this, of course, uh, can have and has uh, all implications uh, for, for accretion disk, etc., uh, ISCO, etc. So uh, the essence of what I am talking about here is that even if we do not know anything about Einstein's theory, and we know only that velocity of light is uh, a barrier for physical velocities, we can correctly, considering Newton's theory, discover important properties of Einstein dynamics in the strong field. That, that, that is the message. So uh, using, using the same approach, let us consider <coughs> quantum alternatives to black holes by considering what kind of shape the effective potential could have in quantum gravity theories, which far away from the strong field regime behave like uh, Einstein theory predicts. So I finish pretending that we do not know Einstein, and, but we can guess some Einstein features considering Newton. Now I'm in the mood that we do know Einstein's theory and we are trying to guess some quantum gravity uh, alternatives to black holes or some quantum gravity effects in the strong field limit, not knowing quantum gravity, just taking them from, from Einstein's theory. And then, of course, there would be a similar thing. There would be uh, some Planckian regime uh, in which we cannot use Einstein, that quantum gravity operates uh, only a topology in a pos pos operates possibly in a different topological way only uh, in this very strong field here. So my, uh, or as our idea, uh, as I am working on this with several, with several colleagues, and uh, let me uh, name them. That is uh, Irka Horak from Prague. Maciek Wielgus from Event Horizon Telescope Group at Harvard. And uh, also our uh, collaborators in Paris, uh, Frédéric Vincent, other people like, uh, I, I still remember uh, family name of, 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 of Katka, uh, Sorry, Katka, uh, from a few years ago, Kat Katka Goluchova, and uh, other people. But um, le let me stress what I started with this, that the inspiration uh, of, of this research and of the thinking and also some research which uh, has been already done, the inspiration came from Stuchlik's paper on these images of uh, accretion structures around non-care uh, object, naked singularities, which are very different than care images. So one of the possibility, so the idea is, <clears throat> that uh, there are, of course, 
many possibilities of topology, but hopefully uh, this many means only small amount, like maybe there are three, maybe there are five, and we can uh, consider all possible topologies one by one. And we have indeed, uh, so first of all, we have no general arguments of what uh, could be these different topologies. But we have examples of classes of different topologies, which seem to be uh, the genuine, the most important ones. So the first class is, I would uh, call it grava star-like, or as I should say, compact star-like. Compact star meaning that the surface of the star, so that is Einstein, it goes to uh, unstable orbit. And if it is uh, not a, an effective potential for particles, but for photons, then uh, the top of the potential barrier is at 3m. So compact star has its radius smaller than 3m. And it is possible that some quantum alternatives uh, to black holes, in particular the grava stars, uh, material objects with, ra with radii less than 3m, okay? One possibility. But the thing is that uh, if the object is spherically symmetric, then necessarily at the center of it, uh, the effective potential should behave the same way as it does uh, in Newton's theory. And that is basically because uh, the center, at, at the center of, spheres, of a spherical star, there is no gravity. Uh, there is Minkowski space-time. So there is this infinite potential barrier. So that is a genuine uh, shape of a horizontless grava star like or very uh, or ultra compact star like object <clears throat> and then we also could you hear a siren mr chairman no okay no, no. Okay, no, 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 everything's fine. You're me. We, we, yes, we have yes. a very bad weather now here in my village. And, uh, oh, really? So you have some uh, warning or something? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I just almost finished. So that's very uh, fortunate because, because there is a kind of an alarm. Uh, we oh. have uh, okay. a very strong wind and also flood. So th this is really bad. Okay, okay, no, I cannot hear, we cannot hear that here. Okay, no, no. okay yeah, you, yeah, you still have 13 minutes, so I'm you are not, fine. I'm almost done, so I... Okay, no, no worries, yeah, you have 13 minutes, I'm so it's okay. Before this emergency. Okay, so okay. This is one possible type of topology. And another type of a horizontal object is a wormhole. I wrote quantum wormhole because uh, wormholes uh, typically, uh, wormholes uh, considered in literature typically uh, kind of a vacuum objects, uh, but uh, so it is uh, two metrics, like it could be even two Schwarzschild metrics or two Kerr metrics joint uh, at a infinitesimally thin matter distribution and this matter necessarily should be quantum matter because it has unusual properties uh, like for example negative pressure or things like this so uh, we claim that uh, a genuine shape of 
the effective potential in this case looks like that. So that is in our universe, and you see that is a, a part of Einstein, like, like the same like in Einstein black hole. And also here is like in this other universe, wormhole, wormholes are joined to different universes. So there are two asymptotically flat uh, regions in space, uh, but they belong to different universes. And in the other universe, it is uh, the same shape, but the top of the potential barrier could be at a different place than here. And then, because uh, the shape of the effective potential is important for uh, propagation of photons, uh, then whether that is uh, higher the top is higher here than there, is an issue, okay? Or uh, people also consider a possibility of a wormhole, uh, so-called symmetric wormholes to where uh, these two tops at, uh, at the same level. And what we can have with this? So the, the, the first research, uh, this research with is with Katka and Irka, uh, which is finished but not published yet, <coughs> shows uh, some possibilities uh, which are, and and it is a compact star. Okay? We, we are considering uh, the uh, propagation of gravitational waves partially trapped uh, in this compact object and they are uh, partially escaping. What is uh, important and interesting is this echoes that uh, we can study the nature of echoes at uh, compact objects. Research was done for gravitational waves but uh, one could repeat this also for photons and try to construct images of uh, <clears throat> matter close to super to ultra compact objects uh, in the context of event horizon telescope images and the second research uh, done by Maciek, Irka, Frederick and me uh, considers this kind of this kind of uh, wormholes, asymmetric wormholes with the top of the potential barrier in the other universe higher than the one in uh, our universe. Oops. And uh, that is uh, uh, not published yet, but it will be published soon in, in Physical Review D. Uh, so uh, what, what, what you claim is that uh, there is a secondary ring, so-called, connected. So the, the, the first ring, photon ring, is uh, governed by the, the top of this potential barrier. And the second one is governed by this potential barrier. Fine, and that is all I have to say. <clears throat> so inspiration was long time ago from this uh, important paper by Zdenek and his colleagues. And the idea is that in studying 
images which may be relevant for uh, event horizon telescope uh, real images of, 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 of M87 and Sagittarius that we may have an approach, one could have an approach which is based not on very de detailed analysis of uh, <clears throat> photon motion in some non-care space-time constructed by approximations, for example, post-Newtonian approach uh, advocated by Dimitros Psaltis, but very general topo topological consideration. And that, that uh, this may be fruitful uh, as Roger Penrose proof of singularity theory. We have several examples in the relativistic physics that topological methods are very powerful. People are, and that, that is where I, I am now telling my private opinion. People somehow are either afraid of topological methods or they do not like them because they would like to have something specific and concrete. Like I have this metric, so uh, that is a, a solution of Einstein field equations, or it is an approximation uh, obtained by very well defined method. And I better stick to this uh, solid, simple things. But Roger Penrose would not prove his singularity theorem if he would stick to this kind of thinking and uh, an approach. His singularity theorems are very general. They concern every possible cases and they are as powerful as very detailed considerations. So my last word is consider topology, consider topology, consider uh, studying images relevant to event horizon telescope using topological methods. Consider features in gravitational wave ring downs and echoes uh, by using topological methods. This may be successful. I finished, but let me uh, only say that if my presentation is online, then it has also this content for easy navigation. And navigation is here, you go there. And then you make use whatever. Okay, so well, thank you very thank much. You. Okay, thank you very much, Professor, for this very, very interesting talk. So if there are any questions from the participants. Marco, if you uh, close the full uh, full screen view you you will be able to see us <laughs> okay <Great>. hello <laughs> hello sorry still i i see only myself oh really okay uh, i'm not sure how to fix that so i wonder if there are any questions so far from somebody who raised yes, the hand? Zavata, a question okay yeah there is one question here from Elisabetta Kulnova. Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon. I'm, I'm just wondering um, about this uh, particular transition. You, you, you've started with this uh, uh, explanation that we uh, consider the effective potential and uh, 
uh, topologically we consider different uh, continu continuation of this particular curve. Uh, so when you go this step forward and you consider that you know the Einstein equation and, uh, and general general you, relativity. Do you see uh, the, the slide? Uh, yes, I do. So are we talking about this? Mm, yes, 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 basically. So uh, this is the curve of the effective potential, if I understood it right, yes? yes. And uh, uh, when you go forward and you consider this Einstein uh, um, general relativity, yes. then he, I, I was just wondering if I, if I understand it correctly, that you then should write uh, this topological curve of this effective potential in terms of this Christoffel symbols and, uh, and no, matrix, no, so, no? No, 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 no. This is exactly what I wouldn't like to do. <laughs> I'm saying this, that uh, one is kind of attracted to, uh, to, to, do, to do what you suggested. But topological methods are different. It is like this. Uh, Newton here is red, OK? But we cannot believe in this red curve in this region. And we know this not from Einstein, we know this from Newton, because in this region, orbital velocities would be greater than velocity of light. So we do not believe in this region. So that is not possibly the uh, correct behavior of an effective potential. And uh, what could happen then to effective potential? It could go this way or that way. There are no other possibilities. And the thing is that from a kind of a general effective potential approach, we know that circular orbits are uh, at the extrema of effective potential. So uh, either here or there. And also that if we have this effective potential curve, then uh, the energy sh for, for, for motion to be possible, that energy uh, must be greater than the effective potential. So if this is the line, correct line, it's one of the three possibilities, topological possibility, then first of all, uh, a motion is possible like that, uh, over the top of the effective potential. There is not infinite potential barrier. And then we have stable and unstable orbits. And that this information, although very general, is sufficient to tell that there would be a specific uh, differences between Newton and Einstein. And we know that these differences uh, if expressed in some numbers would be 0 0.7 or 0 0.07, but we know that these differences exist and uh, that they have in terms of uh, event horizon telescope, for example, that they have a specific topology at the image. So it is differences in topology which concern effective potential would translate into differences in what we observe, topological. We don't know whether uh, from topological consideration, whether they will be big or small. Uh, and that of course is, is it, uh, uh, something which uh, some people wouldn't like. But if we do see different topology, then it is a proof that things are different. Okay, if we if we see uh, a difference, which is the same topology, but it is quantitative a quantitative difference. We do not know whether this difference is given by the metric, uh, uh, our methods of calculating accretion disk structure, or some other details. So. What I'm stressing is that topology is like in Penrose's uh, 
proof of singularity. The topology, topology is sufficient to say strong things about physics. And uh, we are using topology not uh, to its full strength in this particular research of uh, event horizon telescope images and gravitational ring downs and echoes. Okay, not crystal symbols, not small, not small differences, but okay, that, that is my answer to your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have another question by Miljenko. So uh, I would have uh, a comment. Yes. This is not a question because it's just a comment. That uh, uh, thanks for the this uh, talk because uh, it is an echo of something what was done in 18th century with new, with this kind of curves exactly by Roger Boschkovich, uh, a Jesuit mathematician and physicist, and uh, he exactly in the similar way but not speaking of topology, but speaking of analy analytical methods, he plot a curve, it's a Boschkovich curve, which uh, was then discussing, and he was discussing uh, exactly the gravitational force, and then the other possible forces by analytical methods, just considering how it will be uh, behaving uh, close to the objects, when, when, you, um, when you put two objects close and closer, and from this curve, he, in fact, one can see the atomical forces in Boschkovich curves and Van der Waals forces. Yes, and uh, I, have, I have heard uh, about this, and thank you very much for reminding us uh, 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 this. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very good comment, thank you. Yeah. But yes, I, so I'm saying I, thank you I, for this. Yes, very good comment. Yes, it's exactly this idea, as, as, as you noticed. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether I still have a reference uh, to, 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 he, to his uh, publication. Could you, could you, you, you know my email, right? And it yes, is, yes, I will write to you. Yes, yes. Uh, please send okay. me. Uh, okay, send I will. Thank you very much for the comment. Mm -hmm historical but it is like uh you see einstein discovered his uh, general relativity by referring mentally to uh simple facts from the distant past to galileo for example and uh so some physical ideas are, are very deep and uh, they are always with us, uh, independently of our detailed knowledge about uh, 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 about equations which are describing this. So th that is exactly the idea. So, thanks a lot. Okay. So there is another question by John Miller. So, okay, John. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. Oh, wonderful, because the last time I tried to ask a question, it didn't work. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Marek, there's something I'm not understanding here. When you're talking about the secondary rings in the EHT images uh, connected with the quantum wormholes, I don't understand how one could get any knowledge of the other universe into ours. Am I missing something here? No, no you are not missing something. Let, let me explain this. Uh, okay, so that is this general shape of the effective potential. And then he, uh, it is that uh, the orbits uh, with some uh, given energy uh, are characterized by lines here, right? 
So mm -hmm. the, the, if the, there is a line, the line could, could approach this potential barrier. And then the motion uh, is semi-infinite. Uh, it enters the, the other universe, but not really the other universe very far away, but close. And then it is, uh, we, know, we, we gain some perhaps knowledge about the other universe, but very little. Uh, we don't really care about this other universe because uh, <coughs> what we are considering is these photons coming from our universe, bumping here and then returning. Now, it is obvious that if there would be a different arrangement, if this top will be uh, at a higher level than this top, we, we couldn't uh, really uh, have the same situa situation because then it would be like here or there. There is no topological difference between uh, if, if, that, uh, if this top is here, then we will see only the sense the, the, the same as in the case of Einstein black hole. So, uh, of course, that there are photons which are originate in the outer universe, and uh, but uh, but. But uh, you see that that is now a um, specific example. Riser Nordstrom wormhole, which we constructed, and there are uh, examples of two photon trajectories, and uh, uh, they they form uh, at the image two rings. One is connected uh, with uh, the potential barrier in our universe, and, and another ring is uh, connected with uh, the, the potential barrier in the outer, in, in the other universe. Okay, I hear what you're saying, but I'm afraid I'm a bit skeptical. Uh, that that. Not, that doesn't surprise me. I also am a bit skeptical about <laughs> wormholes. So uh, that that is that is, however, uh, let me repeat something which I said several times. It is that we are looking in this approach. If we accept that it is a reasonable approach. <clears throat> we consider all possible topologies for the effective potential. And of course we are calling this wormhole, but we even could be kind of more arrogant and saying, I don't know what is this. I only consider uh, the shape of effective potential and it cannot have too many shapes, which would uh, be then, uh, producing different images. There is a small connection of all possible shapes. And then by considering shape by shape, I may say if the shape of, uh, and of course I can classify them and give names, etc. So if it is this, then topology of the image would be that. If it is this, then the topology of the image would be that. By the way, they will may say, uh, if it is like this, it re it's uh, very similar to an example of a wormhole, John. Yes. And then, and then uh, but, but strictly speaking, in this approach, it is not even necessary. We don't know what this object is. We, 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 we uh, but even my collaborators doesn't uh, like that uh, one goes to, uh, to uh, to this extreme. Okay, I understand. 
Okay. It is Thank like you. you look at the image, you see some features. Could these features be explained by the Kerr black hole? And the answer is no, they cannot be. Mm -hmm. Whatever accretion disk is, whatever you have jet, you have this, you have that, but you cannot explain this image by by uh, by Kerr. And I believe that uh, an example of, of, of such an, an image, which cannot be explained by Kerr, is given in this Stuchlik's paper. Whatever you imagine for a Christian disk with jet and two jets or three jets, you, you, you cannot produce this image. That's the idea. And mm -hmm. therefore, there is a proof that is not Kerr black hole. And that's it. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much, John. Uh, there is a last question by uh, David Alvarez. David. Uh -huh. uh, greetings. Uh, I would like to ask about the possibility of quantum tunneling from one well into the other in this uh, sort of uh, double well potentials. Uh, that, that is... Uh... That is something else. Of course, it is, is possible, but strictly speaking, it's outside of uh, of the subject. Uh, we consider effective potential and photon photon motion in this effective potential. So, geometrical optics uh, when the effective potential for photons is given, and Tunneling, interesting. I haven't, I haven't heard of, of this. Uh, is, sorry, I haven't thought of this. However, uh, in our gravitational wave approach, when we are uh, in our gravitational wave uh, research with uh, uh, Irka and Katka, uh, when we are considering dumping of this gravitational wave, some tunneling effects be, be, because we have uh, a kind of a Schrodinger equation uh, describing the wave behavior. So uh, there is some tunneling uh, effect, but it is not quantum tunneling really. It is similar. So I, I, I wouldn't like to go into details uh, be, because we haven't considered in a any of the specific research we have done, we haven't considered anything which would be a genuine quantum tunneling. Okay, so I will not answer this question because I don't know the answer. Okay, thank you. Okay, so okay, so thank you very much. So, Professor, thank you very much again for this very, very interesting talk.